here. Okay. Is it working? Is it? Yes. Yeah. We got something? I think we got something. Ashley's got an ad. Let's skip that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got something? Yep. Hi? Hello? Yeah, you got a lag, but you can keep going. Okay. I'm here. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. That was a little uh, a little crazy. But I'm here. I'm in my shop. Uh, I see there's some awesome people on there already. Hey, Dave. Hey, Fred. Hey, Dennis. Uh, hey, Carl. Steve from Arbor Tech. Whew. All right. Big relief. <laughs> Coming through OK audio-wise. All right. So we're good. I got a cart set up. We're going to do a tour of my space and feel free to ask any questions you want. Ashley's going to be over here asking additional questions um, that I don't get to read while I'm explaining other things. Uh, I got a lot of projects going on in the shop right now. It is, um, I'm doing a ton of plat pattern plywood. So uh, bring the cart over here. So you guys can see, this is what I've been teasing a whole bunch is this, um, the hexagon patterns. And I've been building these in the shop um, for the last couple days. Uh, people have been asking how they're made. They just saw the image of the little ones right here. And uh, basically what, it's been, what I've been doing is gluing these up um, in long strips and then cu cutting them to thickness. And then I can make these panels basically as, as thick as I want. So um, this video is gonna be coming out in a little bit, um, but I'm also gonna do a pattern plywood demo for you guys uh, next, uh, or tomorrow, tomorrow. So that's over here. So I got a couple of glue ups here. Let me change my view. Quick. Again, still trying to figure this thing out. All right, there we go. So you can see I got two big glue ups here. I'm very backlit now. Good thing I can see the view. Um, these are going to be uh, power carved tomorrow. So I've got a couple patterns here, and this is going to be the chevron pattern that you guys have seen me do in the past. It's um, it's uh, alternating large, uh, uh, like one inch sections and half inch sections. And then tomorrow I'll also, if I've got time, I'll power carve both of these. I'm thinking of doing kind of like salad bowls or, or um, doing like fruit bowls for the kitchen. Um, so this one's a little bit different. I've got the two inch section here and here, and these are one inch sections here and here. So I think it's gonna look kind of cool with the um, arrows pointing out. So anyway. If you guys have questions about the shop, feel free to uh, send them my way, and Ashley's going to be um, let me know what the questions are. You got anything, Ashley? Okay, nothing so far. So uh, I think to start with the tour of my shop, I've never done an, a proper shop tour video, um, so that is probably on its way. I'd like to do a really nice polished one at some point, but. Um, but for now, let's, let's just discuss how my shop operates. Usually it's um, loaded in from obviously the giant garage door here that you can see. And uh, sheet goods are stored here. I can get, um, it's actually almost fully stocked right now, I can get about 16 sheets of plywood into, into that storage area, which is awesome. And then I have all of this storage, these storage racks up here for long materials. Um, usually this is deep storage. A lot of times I won't buy long materials if I'm immediately, unless I'm immediately using them. So a lot of this stuff has been either gifted to me or stuff that was like overflow from old jobs that never quite finished. So, um, or I, I didn't quite use all of the material. So I can um, set things up there. I can store, I think, 16 foot long links up there, which is way more than I ever need. So it's great. Up, up across here, you can see um, this is kind of my, 
my excess storage. So um, this I, I clean out about every three months or so, but I like to keep um, larger to medium sized pieces of plywood up here. Once they get certain size, they just uh, end up in the scrap bin. But those are great for grabbing for small projects, things like the cart that the, the um, laptop is literally on right now. That, that all that scrap material came from up here. And then I have kind of hardwood storage over here. I'll just take the laptop this way. So you can see, um, I try and keep this pretty organized because I found that if I don't keep it organized, I don't know where my scraps are. Um, it, I, I just won't use it. Like if I've got a, a nice chunk of walnut, I'll never be able to find it. So I actually do it by species. So it's pine here, walnut here, um, maple and oak down here, uh, I think, and then I've got exotics and then some extra storage for plywoods and stuff. Um, that's super handy when I actually organized that. It kind of changed uh, like how much wood I needed to buy. Like a lot of times I was buying over and over again when I actually had the materials stored here in the shop. So I'd recommend anyone trying that if you can keep it up it's really really handy i will have to clean those out about every six months or so to make sure that there's nothing like log jammed in there um, but for the most part that that size has been great i i very rarely exceed that amount of um like small materials and it's and it's surprisingly deep you can almost get a 48 inch length back there so um yeah it's it's super handy i've got deep uh, i've got additional storage down here uh, right about there which is a whole bunch of walnut right now um that was given me to my friend nathan if you're watching nathan thank you uh the fortunate thing about being a woodworker is, is a lot of times you get calls randomly and uh people will just be like hey i've got all this stuff all these offcuts from this job uh will you take it and i i have storage so i i usually say yes um so coming from there um i, I guess next would be processing ashley any any questions any yeah we got a question what's up um, first is len smith asks okay len Uh, the router table. Okay, I'm going to wheel you over there. Sorry if this is shaky. It's not, it's not exactly smooth. Um, so the router table, the only thing that I might change about it um, is venting. Uh, I thought about this a while, like while I was building it, whether it needed venting or not. And it, it, doesn't from like a cooling standpoint. So this is the this is the front and the router um, sits in here. If you guys haven't seen this, I've got a full build video on it. It's based on the uh, Rockler frame and the um, uh, uh, and I, I kind of altered it. I ended up cutting out from the, the metal area here, but um, everything's been really good. The, the drawers work great. Uh, I have just enough storage. Um, I actually have a whole bunch left over for extra bits and everything, but the issue with the venting is not cooling, but the issue is um, making sure that there's not too much suction. Um, actually, when this thing is closed, and especially with a new dust collection system in, it, it can actually suck a, a, the workpiece down to the table surface. So uh, adding holes into there or some sort of like, I've seen one where, where they're like little slip vents uh, to allow airflow through that box. Um, I think I might, I might do that down the road. The, the main reason why I resisted it is because it looks really nice without it. Um, but I, I talked with, I think maybe, um, uh, um, Johnny Trambucus, uh, who's on here, uh, mentioned that I could actually drill holes through from underneath inside of this, like actually like drill holes through this, and that might be enough. Um, so I might, I might change that down the road, um, but for now, it works okay. Got anything else? Yeah. Um, Sylvia K asks, do you find plywood is easier to carve than solid wood? Um, is plywood even easier to carve than solid wood? Um, it depends. I, well, so far, and tomorrow we'll talk about this a lot, but the, um, I was really impressed with the turbo plane because it, it kept, it didn't tear it out. I, I can't carve with traditional uh, carving tools. Say hi, Ashley. Ashley's uh, answering the questions uh, or asking the questions. I'm still a little. Um, <laughs> uh, so the, 
uh, traditional carving tools don't work great with with plywoods. The the power carving equipment works really well with plywood, and um, like things like the Fordham right here. This is a flex shaft carving tool, which I've used on plywoods before, and I like it a lot. Um, like the burrs, um, you can carve really easily in the plywoods. But I, I have not, because it's almost like carving end grain, especially the pattern plywoods, um, where the grain is just like facing up at you, it has a tendency to tear out, and it's really hard to control with, um, with um, you know, regular chisels and stuff. But when I did the stool carve, it was, um, I got really, really nice, uh, smooth, finish out of, out of just using the turbo plane alone. And again, tomorrow I'm going to be doing some power carving. You could actually see that finish. It's got, it gets a, a shine on it. Um, so not a lot of sanding afterwards. Got anything else? Yeah. Um, Keith Alm wants to know how you got such a nice headshot. And <laughs> Is that my brother or my dad? I don't know. It's, there's one Keith Alm who's asking. Um, I got a nice headshot from uh, Mark Adams, who is uh, who comes to a whole bunch of maker events, and he is um, an amazing photographer. And I don't know how he does it, but everybody looks amazing when they get their photo taken by Mark. So, thank you, Mark. <laughs> we also have a question from Keeper Goldberg. Okay. Uh, asking for a friend, what would you make with six oak four by fours, forty eight by fifty six in place that you acquired for free? My friend doesn't have access to a bandsaw or a resaw. Wow. Um, chainsaw? <laughs> That's massive. Those are so big. I don't know. It's 48 by something? By 50 something? 56? 56? That's massive. Those are huge. Yeah, I might have to think about that one. That's that's um, that's a lot of lumber. <laughs> Tom Roos, do you just like those yellow HD saw horses as much as I do? Yes. Yeah, I literally had, uh, I don't know, can you guys hear Ashley's uh, uh, audio? I, I've literally had those sawhorses collapse on me on a job site, like overnight. I've had, we've put a little bit too much weight on them, and then they just, these are the sawhorses to buy. Um, they're, they're collapsible sawhorses. They fold up, they're super heavy. But they, they have this, like, the legs scissor down, so that when you can, um, here, I'll just open them up. Like these are pricey-ish. I think they're like 50 bucks or 60 bucks or so. Somebody in the comments probably knows. But they last forever because they're steel and their legs are adjustable. So you can, you can shorten them, raise them. And I've had these two for probably about, um, I don't know, like five or six years. And they, they just hold up, like on job sites and stuff, hold up in the rain, and again, they just collapse right down, and they collapse with all the different leg lengths, too, and then you carry them away. So, I don't don't mess with those plastic things. It's not worth it. You'll buy them like 20 times. Um, so, yeah, anything else? All right, no other questions. So, we're going to go, where were we? We were over by, oh yeah, I was going to talk about processing lumber. So, in my shop... Um, I have pretty much a dedicated table to the, well, it's, it's the cross-cut saw, or the track saw, this job right here, the Festool track saw. Um, I bought the track saw in lieu of buying a table saw uh, early on when I was building the business. I have, a, like, a contractor grade, like, $300 uh, table saw, and I bought this, which pretty much saved me from having to buy a, a cabinet grade saw for about three years. I was able to run my business with this because everything that was massive I could run through this and then everything that was smaller I, uh, I did on that contractor saw. It's not perfect but this, this was actually a money saver when I bought it. Um, so I've got, it's all Festool gear, it's the Festool uh, vacuum with, uh, you can see this is my, I'll take you guys down there. I did a story about this when I, when I built it but um, this is where the domino lives. This is where the sander lives. And then the track saw goes under here. And then I've got my sustainers here. So it's really it. And then I leave this. Usually it's a little bit cleaner than this. But <laughs> I leave this for, for open, like, pass through. So a lot of times I have to pass the saw underneath. And I'll just slide it, slide it right on through. So I like, I like having that open table. It may be kind of like 
a waste of um, potential storage space, but I'm, I, I feel like having, having an area to, to swap that through is just so much faster for my workflow. So um, yeah, so processing lumber, whenever I bring in a sheet, you'll see in almost every video, um, I'll start off with like kicking a sheet down like that. Um, got a question? Yeah, I got three. I got three uh, questions. Dennis Nestor wants to know who makes your, uh, those things, sauce. Uh, oh, hey Dennis. Um, yeah, who does make those? I don't know. I'll post a link um, somewhere. I don't know if I can. Who does make these? I bought them at Home Depot. I know that you can buy them through Home Depot. Um, you know, uh, the Uedas have used these before to make tables out of. So they know also. I'll hit you up when um, when I can figure out. But they're they're on the Home Depot website. If you search just sawhorses, these will probably be probably on the later side of it. But I'm I'm, I'm sure you can pick them up there. Uh, yeah. Well, you had other questions. I didn't do anything to it for the outdoors. It had a coat of finish on it um, that was existing from the deck, and it was a really bad coat of finish. So I've kind of been letting that peel off um, because I made it out of, for people who don't know, I made it out of a, an old deck that, um, that my, my friends were tearing out. But we can actually go outside and see it. So it's holding up pretty good. Um, it's grayed out quite a bit, uh, but that's that's fine. It's all cedar, so it should be good. Uh, Ashley's planted a whole bunch of new things in there, so we should have beans coming up. Right now we just have some chard, and uh, I think those are fava beans. And then the, um, what is this, the uh, rosemary is doing really well. We need to replant that. But if you look at the deck, or the, the deck, that, the actual bench, um, it's got some checking and stuff, but it's still holding up really good. Uh, yeah, I think I might actually put a coat of something, some sealer on it this year, um, but I, I need to actually sand it down in order to do that. Oh, uh, yeah. Question? What's up? Simon Cowart wants to know, is the shelf above the drill press continuous, or is it part of your workbench? Oh, okay. The shelf... The shelf above the drill press, is it continuous or part of my workbench? It is continuous um, from like corner to corner. I think it's 16 feet long, uh, if I remember correctly, and it's backlit with a uh, light. All that it, all it supports it, it's supported on that end, um, screwed into that, uh, the boards that hold up the wood storage, and then it's supported in the center with the, with all the bins, and then on the far right, it just hangs. And then uh, you can't really see it because the ash boards are there, but it just, it's, uh, it, and it sort of, it sort of sags a little bit. I have got, I framed it out with two by fours, basically made um, a rectangle out of two by fours with at, at every, I think like 32 inches or something like that, I put a, uh, a two by four cross brace and uh, and then just screwed it into the wall. So it's basically like a giant cleat. Um, and it's not like crazy strong, but I can store tools up there. I've got some sanders and some um, air, ho air, air equipment and stuff up there. And all my total boat stuff is up there along with random stuff. Um, yeah, it's not, it's a, uh, yeah, but it, it, it was free floating for a while. It wasn't like this thing didn't support it until uh, until I built that, which was which was afterwards. So yeah, got another one. Mm -hmm. um, how did you extend your Quest Tool track saw vacuum attachment from Shiraz? Oh, how did I extend my my Fest Tool vacuum attachment? I haven't extended it. Um, I've made some alterations to it. Uh, let's go over there. So I'm testing this out. This was something that um, I got from Rockler. I, I don't usually use this with the track saw, but with the sander, it's pretty great. And this is like an adjustable thing. But the hose itself is exactly the same, except for I found this this um, mesh. It's sort of like a Chinese finger trap, if you've ever seen. It's like that material where if you pull in both directions, it kind of sucks in. Um, and there's a company that I found on Amazon, um, I think it's like Montana Tools or something like that. And they make these, these 
I, I'm sure that you just buy them in bulk and then they re um, distribute them. But you you basically have some shrink hose and that mesh um, that goes over the top of it and pulls both the cord because mine has the cord attachment that can be put onto all the different tools. So after I've detached this, I can I can swap it out for the track saw, plug the the vacuum in, and then plug the um, yeah. So hopefully that answers that, but I haven't extended it in any way. It's it's the it's the hose that came with the, the extractor. Um, Ashley says there's more questions. What's up? Ooh. Or bring all your tools to the same okay. Um, work surface height is all the same, mostly. Um, so there's there's. I guess there's two work surface heights. So there's the, the main shop tables, which are the black and white. There's a black table here, a white table here. Those are the same height as the, um, as the saw stop. So the saw stop is at 34 inches and um, the table saw is at 34 inches. I, 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 I did I built these before I bought the table saw, but I knew I was going to buy that table saw, so I based everything on that. The idea with that is that these, all my tables are on wheels, so um, I can roll this table over to the table saw here and use it as extra outfeed. So I can actually roll it behind here and have another six feet of outfeed if I ever need it. It's pretty rare that I need that. Um, I've, I've, I think I've done it twice, honestly. Um, but it is nice to have things all the same height because sometimes I orient, orient these tables where, uh, so the table saw is right here, the uh, outfeed or the, the um, assembly table is here, and then the white ones in the back. If I've got a really heavy sheet of something like uh, like MDF, I could push the white table all the way to the side of the table saw, have it as side feed support, and then on the other side I can have this as side feed support. So I've definitely had those situations, and I'm trying to think. There's a couple of videos that I've done where I definitely use that um, to my advantage. Especially I use I, I work alone most of the time, and so if I'm cutting big countertop material or something like that, it's really really nice to have. The other the other uh, support height, height is uh, the other height is the work is is the like. Fred McIntyre, have you ever hey Fred. Tried making any pattern plywood projects from skateboards? If not, is it something you've thought about trying? Yeah. So um, Fred, if you can't hear Ashley, um, he's asking about making pattern plywood out of skateboards and whether I've thought about it and absolutely Fred I really really want to and that's something that um, I, I think I, I talked with Ben Paik I, I met him down in LA a little while back and um, I, we're gonna uh, hopefully I can just get some from him um, I don't know if I want to go through the processing of um, processing it all but I definitely have some ideas for how to use it or ways to use it as just decorative strips I really like those um, Guitar makers, I can't remember what they call it. They're like rosettes or rose. They're, they're the, the the patterns that they make around the sides of instruments that are beautiful. And I've been looking at those a lot. And I think if you made something like that with the really colorful um, skateboard stuff, it would be really cool. I got I've got so many ideas for pattern plywood, and actually, it's I, I think I think there's going to be a number of videos in like like really soon on pattern plywood because I've this this thing this the pattern plywood this one is spiraled out of control it's like there's so many patterns Ashley was in here the other day and I was just like I've discovered like 15 more patterns it doesn't end so I'm really excited to do some more but yeah definitely skateboards will be in the future Got another one yep. Uh, am I pleased with my dust extraction upgrade? Yes, I am very pleased. It's really, really noticeable, especially with the table saw um, and the router. I mean, that it might be because the router is so close. So you can see um, that's the router table and that, oh wait, no, it comes from this chute right here. Um, but yeah, I'm thrilled with it. Uh, I, I still need to do some work, uh, and I mentioned this in the video, I need to do some work on the sander and the, um, the uh, bandsaw. Uh, and Blake Weber has, Blake might be on this, I think Blake's on this, hi Blake. Uh, he's got a really cool demo on how you can hook up uh, a, like dust collection underneath the bed 
can I get, oh, there it is, <laughs> underneath the bed of the table, so I'm still practicing on my backwards pointing through the camera. Um, yeah, there, so I'm, I need to do some upgrading in that way, but in terms of the power and the suction of this machine, I am really, really impressed with it. Um, I had some interesting comments and about, uh, you know, obviously I got the comments about grounding it. I got a lot of comments about, um, reducing these as you go along the um, the row is like you get smaller and smaller. I thought that was kind of interesting because I have noticed that I have more suction over here than I do over here, but I think that my run's so small considering the power of that machine that it's really not a big deal. Um, the, let's see, the, yeah, the other addition that I'm going to make, I might actually, uh, I can, I've built this table to actually be a God, I'm, I think I'm getting worse at this. I've built a table that Ashley's in um, to be a downdraft table as well. So I might hook that up. I think I'm going to do a whole an, another video if people are interested in it um, uh, of the of additions to the system because there's there's enough going on. Like overarm dust collection would be really nice on the table saw. And actually, I think I'm going to ground the system, um, which is crazy. I don't think it's going to explode. I think that's a total myth. Um, there's not enough dust traveling through, yada, yada. But um, I have gotten some shocks. Like, I have used this this hose here, the extendable hose, and been, like, close, like, underneath the bandsaw and felt a little bit of a, of a shock here. And someone mentioned that that can actually cause harm to electronics. And I'm thinking about the saw stop. I just don't want um, anything to happen, so I'll probably I'll probably end up grounding the system pretty soon. We have a question from Victor Tavares. Okay. Painting or woodworking? If you could only ever do one, what would you uh, do? Painting or woodworking? If I could ever only do one, I mean woodworking probably. My background's in sculpture. I really like painting as a. Um, it's like a ther. Well, they're both therapeutic to me, but. Uh, it's like my, it's how I unwind a lot of times, or sometimes I'll get up in the morning and I'll paint. Um, but if I have a hobby, that would be more of my hobby. And then this is like my passion and my job and, um, woodworking pays the bills. I think it'd be a lot harder for me to make a living, uh, painting <laughs> as much as I love it. So thank you. What's the... I think I'm pretty open about the tool receipts. Uh, there have been some really big purchases over the last year, which has been uh, like discussions for sure. Like the, I mean this, the dust collector, but it was for my health. And same thing with the saw stop. When I bought the saw stop, that was a really, really big pill to swallow. You can see, I mean, it, it's, a, it's an expensive machine and um, I was just finding that I was using it so much, or I needed a table saw so much and I was doing so many workarounds that I just had to do it. I'm not a crazy, like I've got a nice shop, but I think most of most of it has been paid for by specific jobs. So I'm a big believer in like, if you've got a job that needs the tool, buy the tool for the job. Um, but yeah, I've just collected for a long time to build up to this shop. Like I think I bought the bandsaw like seven years ago or so. Ashley's waving me down. Uh, mountain soles and outdoor thread, how big is your garage? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, the size of the garage, this is about 500 square feet, I think. Um, it's a big two-car garage. So if I remember correctly, it's like 25 feet this way and 18 feet this way. Yeah, it's a nice size. Um, it gets a little different if you include the back area because technically it's a thousand square feet. Um, there is a second garage, which is overflow. It's very nice to have. That's the messy room. That's where like the, the wolves are stored right now in the, in the frame. Um, I've got my washer dryers in here and my art storage is behind that wall there. Um, all my sculptures, they're in like a glass room that already existed. There's like a glass sliding door in there. Um, but this is my main shop. This is what I work out, out of. But I, there's no way I could keep this shop as clean as I do if I didn't have that area back there. Yeah. Uh, Sean Kirsch has a suggestion for you. A oh, hey, pattern, Sean. Pattern <laughs> <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> uh, or should I say it's it's Sean Kerf, as we decided today. <laughs> Yeah. Have you been able to refine the blue up 
process on those hex shaped pattern pieces? Um, okay, so gluing up hex shaped pattern pieces. I uh, let's turn you around. So a lot of people make cutting boards. I'm just gonna make this rumbly real quick. So a lot of people make these as cutting boards, um, the like MC Escher style stuff. Uh, every, every video that I've watched so far has built a jig like this where it's just a square corner and they press it into it. Um, I think I need to get panels a little bit bigger than this to really crank down on it because what's happening is I'm, I only have a couple of surfaces to register off of when it's actually on the side here. So it's distorting when I try and clamp it and glue it. So the only ways to get these to glue up was to essentially to glue them and just press them into place and then put a little bit of clamping pressure on them. But I was finding that when I put too much clamping pressure, they would just distort. So hopefully as I get bigger, it's going to be better. Um, I'm also going with bigger hexes. So yeah, I'm hoping to fill this whole panel with the, with the next, the next glue up and we'll see how that goes. But if anybody has any suggestions out there, uh, please let me know or videos to watch. Like I know that I, I could only find so many on the MC Escher style, um, uh, like the falling cubes, uh, 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 cutting boards. So if anybody's got suggestions, let me know. Figment's made wants to know if we'll be seeing a pattern plywood banana. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, uh, Figment's made, uh, Sharon. Hi. Uh, yeah, it's that uh, a pattern plywood banana. <laughs> it's a really good idea. I think I might have to do that. I don't think there will be a video on it, um, but I think I might have to do that. That's really funny. You got anything else? Yeah, lots of them. Um, either your brother or your dad wants to know, what's the largest thing you've accidentally sucked into the... <laughs> <laughs> either my... Br I'm guessing that's my brother. My brother asks if I'm if I've sucked anything big up into the dust collector. Not yet. <laughs> I've had a couple dowels go through there. I had... Um, yeah, it's weird. It's actually what, what ends up happening if they're heavy enough, they'll end up... Like, if they came from over, over here... They'll, they'll get sucked up and then they'll end up down in here. They don't make it all the way through. So, um, yeah, but I'll send you a text key as soon as something big goes through that thing. <laughs> Quick question, what's your ceiling height? What is my ceiling height? That is the best thing about this shop ever. It's 12 feet, or it's like 11 and a half, um, and it's unfinished. I don't show that in videos very often. Uh, yeah, it's, it's 11 and a half feet, and um, I have been spoiled because my last shot before this was also 12 foot ceilings and once you do that you don't want to go back to working in a low ceiling garage just because I can haul I can like I could bring big boards I could big bring 10 foot boards in here stand them on end and lay them down uh, just real spoiled I definitely recommend if you are looking for a wood shop um, look for one with high ceilings Nathan wants to know, are you still planning on turning second space into the metal shop eventually? Yes, uh, Nathan. Hi, Nathan. I mentioned you earlier. Thank you for the walnut. Um, I, I, have the, I have the metal shop set up in the second. He's asking if I'm going to use the second shop as, the, as a metal shop, uh, which was my original plan. I was going to do wood in this room, metal in that room, and I think it is. It, it kind of is a metal shop already. Um, I've got one wall devoted to metalworking, and realistically that might be all I need um, I've been working so uh, my I originally started um, doing sculpture in steel actually um, back in high school I did steel sculpture and um, all the way through college I did a lot of welding and I did ceramic work and stuff like that I moved out to Seattle and I couldn't find a good shop to do steel work uh, but woodworking was so much easier I could I could work in um, old warehouse buildings and stuff no problem without worrying to, about burning the place down so um, I always wanted to have a metal shop but it's been like 15 years now and I like my brain works in wood um, and I've, I've, like with the melting table, I brought in some of the, some of the um, steel working back in. And I want to keep doing that. I want to keep adding more steel working in. But I don't think I need to devote that entire space to, um, to metal working. We'd love to have like more kind of like 
um, mixed use stuff. I know there's a lot of projects Ashley wants to work on in there, and um, and having a space for her working on getting gardening equipment out of there. It's it's just a long process. So yeah, but it, but it is kind of a metal shop. Yeah. Selvia K wants to know the best tool dust extractor. Is it worth the price? Considering there are a lot of people. Yes, is the uh, is the Festool dust extractor work, worth the price? I, I'd say so. It's it's really impressive. Um, like when you put any sander, I, like not just the Festool sander, um, and I'm not sponsored by Festool, obviously, but if you put any sander on it, it just inhales the dust. And the Festool sander, like you don't get any dust on the table. Um, I I use the Mirka sander, uh, Mirka. Uh, Sander at at um, uh, WorkbenchCon, and that same deal. It was really impressive. Uh, I think they're basing it. They look really similar. I don't know if some patents got transferred over or they have their own system going. All I know is that I use their their Mirka system, and it's it's also like no no dust lands on the table. So um, those two systems I highly recommend, especially if you're working on job sites because. I uh, I know like I mean or if you're just doing construction in your own home um, like you can sand I've sanded drywall with the regular wood sander in my own home and no dust I think that's kind of like that puts it, that sold it for me if I can do that that saves me so much time so um, I recommend it I know it's another big expense and again I like to pay for those big expenses with jobs. Um, I know that some some of you out there are just hobbyists and you don't take on commission jobs. But when you do take on commission jobs, you can just be like, you know what? I'm going to use this job to um, to just pay for that tool, and that and that's what I did. Yeah, okay. Um, it is heated. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't get that cold here in Seattle, so the bills aren't that high to heat it. Um, and I've spent a lot of time insulating, uh, so the Insulation in the ceiling. I installed it. Wasn't here. There used there's like soffit vents in this roof, and it used to just be like a cool breeze that would come down. It was awful. So I did that. Didn't drywall it because I hate doing drywall. But um, the heating system is is independent to this building, so it heats both garages. Um, and it was installed before I bought the place, so it's um, it's really nice. And uh, and then. I think we I use it probably about five or six months out of the year, and then the most of the time it's just ambient temperature. There's a big concrete pad under me, underneath me, so it really never gets that hot in here. Um, and then you know I've got the door behind me, obviously. So yeah, okay. Is social media mandatory? I'm going to start doing rapid fire because we're running low on time. Um, is social media uh, mandatory? I think I think it should be. I think people need to, need to start advertising themselves. I got a whole bunch of jobs just from Facebook posts uh, when I started my business. Um, I, I started doing a whole bunch of. Uh, I got I got just loads of jobs from from just posting about what I'm making in my own garage. That's how I started my business. So I would highly recommend it. Rockin' R's wood shop, LED shop lighting or standard fluorescent? Uh, LEDs or fluorescent. I made the transition from uh, fluorescent to LEDs a while ago. They are, I, I, yeah, definitely go LED. I, I don't have any complaints, and it's it's been really nice. Um, excuse me, consistent lighting. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit pricier, but I, I recommend it. From your, mom, or from your dad via your mom. From from my mom via my dad, or from my dad via my mom. Apparently, my parents are on this. Um, what's this flag or this flag? The behind the bandsaw is uh, is a fake Explorers Club flag from an old art show of my mom of mine, and I know that my mom knows that. <laughs> Hi, mom <laughs> or dad. Yeah. Um, any more? Uh, yeah, Johnny Trombowski. Trambucus. Trambucus. Bummer, the art show got pushed back. Are you going to make us wait to see the final wolf species? Um, so, yeah, the art show got pushed back. The If you guys have been following all of the wolf, uh, uh, making the wolves and everything like that, that is, I, I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the video, whether I 
I'm going to put it out now. It was supposed to be promotion for the art show. Um, so that's kind of weird to put it out. It's been extended by a year. It's going to be next year. Uh, my guess is I'll probably just end up editing the video and just putting it out. It's going to be a little bit. I've put um, a few like smaller art videos. The art videos don't do that well, so I'm going to do some like actual shop videos, things that do well on my channel, and then I can put that video out because I have no idea what it's going to do. It'll be sponsor lists, and it'll just be sort of passion project thing. So, yeah. Uh, any advice for util utilizing space more efficiently in a small shop? Uh, utilizing space more efficiently in a small shop. Yes, I think even though I have a, a nice size shop, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about organizing. I, you've got the clamp rack here. I kind of cram all of my corners, and um, you'll see storage things. This is the like uh, this is like the Adam Savage style uh, tool holder. This thing. When, uh, when I first started this shop was instrumental because I could just set it right next to my table and work from there. Um, I think, yeah, there's lots and lots to go into with a small shop. I don't know if I have time right now, but uh, when, I, when I do produce the actual full video of this space, I'll, I'll talk a lot about that. Roy wants to know, when every, when, what's the first thing you're going oh, to do Treat. when you're free from self-isolation? What's the first thing I'm going to do when I'm free from self-isolation? I self-isolate anyway. I'm, I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> Go hang out with my friends. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably exactly what I'm going to do. That's all we got. That's all we got. That's all the questions. Yep. Okay. Um, it's got, we got, we got uh, ten minutes, nine minutes left. So uh, if you've got more questions, Ashley's going to be watching out for them. Uh, real quick, things that I didn't cover. I've got the. Um, so we, we did processing the wood, that comes in, it either gets cut up with the track saw or gets cut up with the table saw. I like a table saw to be against the wall, not in the center of the room. It's a personal preference thing. Um, and you guys have seen my storage cabinet and stuff like that. Um, I've, I've kind of built around it, but everything is mobile. Um, that's the other thing, this entire shop, and for small, small wood shop people, Mobile, like just go mobile. Make sure everything can be moved and shifted around. I keep this the space that we're standing in right now, like where your where the computer is, is pretty much open. I, I leave it open for projects, and um, if I need to, I can push this uh, table against that wall or bring both tables against this wall and have huge open space. That was uh, instrumental in like designing this shop out. So everything everything moves around, table saw moves around. So um, once I've made table saw cuts, we can talk about the, the work tables. These are kind of um, things that nobody would really notice in, in, in my shop, but they're uh, really important. So this is a torsion box uh, design on the top. These, uh, this is all um, melamine. This is black and then there's white and same thing. But um, I wax this so nothing sticks to it. Uh, I've got soft wood rails so nothing gets dented from this. Um, this is all tied in with really sturdy joinery. It's made out of two two by fours sandwiched together and then they're like fitted together like puzzle pieces. If I bring you down here, you can see it's just a, it's a super strong, so you see that connection. So this is all half laps that go around in here and big heavy duty locking casters here. So um, they're, they're bomb proof. They're six feet long by three feet wide, uh, which is, oh, Ash has got a question. Um, real quick, they're six feet long by three feet wide, which I like because if it's four by eight sheet, it hangs over, you can cut on the end. It's not too big. I had a four, four foot by eight foot table uh, in my old shop and that was way too big. If I was to make it again, I'd probably make two four by, or three by three tables and one uh, three by six table, um, just because it would be a little bit more easier to, to, to like work on different projects. Did you have another one? Yeah, Eric Yocum wants to know hey, Eric. two tools outside of the larger power tools that you couldn't go without. Two tools outside of the larger power tools that I could not go without. Um, the obvious one's a hand drill. I use that all the time. Uh, oh, let's talk. Was it supposed to be power tools? This is this is a just and this is a cheap one. I know that some people will scoff at me for using a cheap one, but um, it doesn't matter to me. The the um, the I don't use the square 
I don't use this as a square because I don't cut dovetails and I don't do hand joinery. But when it comes to quick measuring, a combination square is life-saving. And I, it was funny, I went and worked at Chris Salamone's shop and he, um, he doesn't have one of these. I couldn't find one and it drove me insane. So I keep this in my pocket and I'm using it all the time. Um, this has become inter instrumental. I know I've talked about this a ton and um, you know, they've been on Rockler sponsored videos. But, I mean, this is like my favorite thing. Regardless of sponsorship, this thing has been, um, it's changed my workflow. I use this all the time and I keep just a pouch on me all the time. And I could just work so much quicker because everything is right here. So, are there more questions? Yeah, Leslie Treat wants to know, when are you building something enormous together? Made the, she's all about that. Yeah, so uh, Wesley, is, uh, Wesley and I are talking about something for the Catskill Mountain Maker Camp, which, fingers crossed, hopefully it happens in uh, October again. It was super fun last year. We're talking about building something really big. Uh, should I spoil it, Wesley? Wesley? No, I'm not going to spoil it, but we're working on it. I'm excited about it, man. Uh, we're, we're definitely building something huge next year at the Catskill Mountain Maker Camp. Any others? Uh, Fred McIntyre wants to know, are those clouds around these <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Fred wants to know about these clouds. Uh, Ashley, Ashley made these clouds. So I just, uh, they're for the animation that we did uh, in the last video, the the, the dazzle camouflage ship video and and um yeah i thought they were pretty funny i couldn't throw them away so i just popped them around the around the cyclone and it's really funny with the static electricity they kind of like they kind of move when when it's on so yeah. Turning wants to know how long have you been woodworking and is it your full-time job how long have i been woodworking is it my full-time job uh i've been worked woodworking since i was a little kid uh, but not seriously i i started seriously woodworking about um, I'd say like eight to ten years ago, you're really pursuing it, and it is my full-time job. It's been my full-time job for a while now. I worked as an art handler, art installer, I worked in museums, uh, but I also built frames and built mounts and stuff for museum objects, which is a lot of wood shop time. And then uh, when I bought this place, I got into home remodel stuff, and then that transitioned into fine furniture building, which I'd always been dabbling in, uh, but didn't take really that seriously until I actually formed a business. And when I formed a business, realized how much I didn't know and what clients were asking of me. And I, I'm very YouTube trained, um, as well as I've like um, sought out some local woodworkers that have helped me out a ton. Yeah, um, we're getting close to the wire. I just want to mention that Paul Jackman is next. Uh, if you guys are transitioning to the next one, I'll stick around for a little bit longer afterwards. Um, uh, just answer, make sure I got everybody's questions answered. Um, but yeah, make sure you go to Paul Jackman. It's on Jackman's uh, channel. So go check that out. Reds wants to know how about a Pacific Northwest Makers Meetup when this is all over? Oh man, I would love that. I really, I really want something to happen on the West Coast. Um, Pacific Northwest Makers Meetup. Uh, somebody's got to organize it. Uh, <laughs> that's the only thing is that they do take a lot of work to organize. So I know that, and I'm not going to organize one, but I'll be there. I'll show up for sure. So yeah, hope hopefully we'll get something on the West Coast. About your old gold sticker that one. The old gold sticker. These, I'm just going to reveal these to you guys who've stuck around. Um, these are the newest design sticker. It's old gold, and as my brother calls it, it's lumbering. <laughs> so yeah, these these will be coming out soon. I've got them printed. I just have been waiting to release them. They'll they'll be um, they'll probably be a Patreon reward. I don't know if I'm going to the fulfillment side of things. I I can't deal with. So it's probably going to be for Patreons exclusive. Um, stuff. So join my Patreon. Get a sticker. Yeah. Maybe we should roll those out now. Yeah. yeah. My brother has a question from a long time ago. Uh, can I use pre wax on acacia wood? <laughs> on acacia wood. Anything else you recommend to seal or stain it? <laughs> is anyone, I don't know. Is a, what is acacia wood? Isn't that like a, isn't that like a succulent? I don't know. Keith, you can use pre wax on anything. You know that. <laughs> Can you use pre wax on everything? Yes, pre wax goes on it, uh, everything. Oh. Um, that's the last question. That's the last question. Uh, all right, how are we doing on time? We got 
three minutes left? One minute left. One minute left. Uh, last little bit. Thank you, everyone, for coming out and watching. Thank you. Um, go, uh, come hang out tomorrow. I'll be power carving, and I'll be answering questions, too. I'm not just going to be with a mask on and you watching me work. Um, I'll, I'll be answering questions, just doing a little bit of power carving, talking about my techniques and stuff. Um, yep, the last little bit. Like I said, I'll do a full shop video at some point. Didn't talk about clamps in this storage rack, but that's pretty self-explanatory. I have a video on those. I uh, didn't talk about this, the Woodmaster. You may have seen stories on that. This is something I've not dove into yet. Um, I need to do some cleanup and repair work on that tool to get it going, but it is pretty rad. Uh, I think that's most of the tools. We didn't talk about the painting corner, which there's a lot going on back there um, from like my art finishing and refinishing stuff and just lo loads of stuff. This. This uh, shop is shockingly cavernous. We didn't really get into any of the drawers or anything either. There's just loads of stuff. So again, there will be a video. Uh, I'm about to hit 100,000 100, subscribers on YouTube. So uh, when that happens, it's probably going to be the next video will be shop tour. So yeah. Any other questions? No, well, thanks. thanks, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Go check out Jackman's channel right now. And uh, yeah, have a great day.